Hey everyone, and welcome to my guide on the Blizzard Sorceress in Diablo 2 Resurrected. This variant of the Sorceress in Diablo 2 is widely regarded as one of the most efficient farming builds in the game. With her ability to deal massive amounts of cold damage over a wide area, she can quickly dispatch large groups of enemies and clear entire maps in record time. This makes her an ideal choice for players looking to accumulate wealth and items, especially on a season start. In this guide, I will cover everything you need to know to build and play a successful Blizzard Sorceress from skill and stat allocations to gear choices and farming strategies. Whether you're a seasoned veteran or a newcomer to the game, this build will help you master the art of freezing your foes and dominating the battlefield with your sorceress. I quickly wanted to mention that this is only the way I've been playing the Blizzard Zork and a lot of it is personal preference, but I can assure you it worked out great for me over the past years that I've been playing this build. With that being said, let's get started. So I leveled up a low level character really quick uh, just to show you like the skill tree at the beginning and stuff. Um, long story short, when I'm starting in a sorceress, I'm using charged bolt at the very beginning though. And later on, in combination with static field. That's a neat little combo you could do, all right? You static field the monsters around you. And then you finish them off with charged bolt. Um, that's in my humble opinion, the best AO AOE ability, which you can get like right at the beginning. Um, when you create your character, you will spawn with a weapon which grants you uh, one to fire bolt. I don't think the fire spells are pretty good to level with, um, since it's more or less... I mean, it deals damage in a radius, but it's more or less a single target ability. And that's not what you want, right? So, I would recommend using charged bolt. Like, just dump every other point in here. As soon as you unlock it, you can put one point in the static field, one point into warmth to help out a little bit with my mana regeneration, even though um, this only really kicks in when you get gear with a lot of plus skills. I would not point any more, po don't put any, any more points than one in here. That would be a total waste. This would uh, slow down your progress tremendously. Um, you want all the points in a damage damaging ability, right? Um, if you want, you can put one point in the frozen armor, so your character will sparkle a little bit. I mean, it, it is what it is, right? Put one point in here at right off the get-go or now. Nah. But yeah, more or less, until you go like full cold sorceress, you will be using charged bolt for the majority of the time. Um, you progress with your twist runs and stuff, right? From like level 0 to level 15. And or rush in a group through the campaign or whatever. Um, yeah. This is good. This is good. Also, later on, like early tomb, early tomb leveling, right? From level 15 to 20 or sometimes even to 25. You will be using this until you reach level 24. Then you can respec. Here, yeah, you gotta waste one reset button from Makara already. And you use Blizzard. Um, already one point in here. Like, it's a blast to play with this ability. Um, it works very well um, when, when uh, leveling uh, in the tombs or uh, later on in especially bail runs, right? Like, let's say you got one or two blizzard sorceress in the in the lobby it's a player's eight bail run on normal you good that that's it that's all you need like it's so ridiculous especially like the scaling is so good at the beginning um yeah that you can like easily carry a bail run but more about this in a second right that's the first respect but yeah for leveling purposes until you reach level 24 that's at least what I'm doing. I just spam charge bolt. Um, I will add a little clip where you can see the damage scaling in a player's 8 lobby. 
I was on the way to like Tristram. We were doing Tristrans real quick, and I was on the way to look for like the red portal, and I cleared some, cleared, cleared a little, a little area. Uh, yeah. Stat points. Well, I mean, until level twenty four, it's the usual. You put enough strength and enough. Uh, I was about to say enough decks, but you don't have any gear which requires decks. You put enough uh, points into strength in order to wear your gear. If you find something until then, um, other than that, dump all the remaining points into Vitality. Uh, there's a little trick you can do right off the get-go. You can win the shop from Akara, a Necromancer weapon. Some of you might wonder why I got Necromancer weapon. Well, uh, instead of a uh, sorcerer stuff, these spawn, these can spawn uh, with faster cast rate, right? So, I bought this, it cost me like 2k gold or 3k or 5k, I don't even remember. It's kind of expensive with a fresh character, but you can get up 5k, like... But it does not make or break the build, right? But breakpoint-wise, faster cast rate breakpoint-wise, I would go over breakpoints and stuff in like... Um, when we talk about like the endgame version. Uh, feel free to use the timestamps below, by the way, if you already level 60 or something and you're watching this video but yeah you could buy um, a 10% faster cast rate wand from Akara and you already have a breakpoint the 9% FCR breakpoint it seems negligible but it's actually like it's useful um, especially most it's it's very likely that you're gonna find a plain 10 FCR ring and the ring in combination with the weapon there you have it. There's already the next breakpoint of 20% faster cast rate. And this will tremendously increase your damage output if you can cast your spells faster. On the other hand, you could, if you want to, look for a weapon uh, which gives you like 3 to charge bolt or 2 to charge bolt. But yeah, I would prioritize faster cast rate. It's overall the most useful stat. Every other point in here, the more points you put in here, <clears throat> the more bolts you can shoot. And it's just a fun ability to use. And um, <clears throat> serves its purpose well. Until you unlock Blizzard. <laughs> So, you successfully leveled to level 24 in order to unlock Blizzard. Um, I'm gonna show you like a level 60 something setup, um, gear choice wise. So you got an idea for what items to look out for when you are in mid to end nightmare, all right. Um, the skill tree though, since I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys are wondering how to actually progress through the campaign if I if I, if I only use a uh, cold damage, well, I will just briefly go over two different skill trees. Right, I don't want to confuse you or anything, but it highly depends on are you playing in a group or are we talking about a solo self found like single player scenario, right? So. First example would be, you reach level 24. You reach level 24 and you start pump pumping up Blizzard. You will max Blizzard. You will put one point into Code Mastery for now. Um, of course, as soon as you hit level 18, uh, you unlock Teleport with level 18, right? So with level 17, you put one point into telekinesis. So in order to 
ride it right on time like with level 18 you got teleport of course one point in static field one point in warmth um but yeah from level 24 onwards you will pump up blizzard start pumping up the synergies in my case i max out ice blast first because that's what i'm using as second ability but yeah as i said in the intro like a lot of choices I make here is like it's personal preference. Some people um, prefer Glacial Spike due to its uh, more it be due to its being more of a ground control ability. Um, it highly depends, right? Um, <clears throat> you don't need a point into Frozen Warp. Like I again messed up by respecking. I accidentally put one point in here. I max out Blizzard, I max out all the synergies, um, and I dump all the remaining points into Cold Mastery. That's pretty much the skill tree. If I'm progressing within a group, right? So I got a ridiculous damage output when we are power leveling in bail runs, normal in nightmare and so on. If you wanna like solo solo progress, you will need a second element. At least before you gain access to a um, Sundered Charm, which I'm going to talk about like a little bit later. For those of you who don't know that already, in Season 2 they introduced some new Grand Charms which break immunities. But yeah, more about that later. Um, <clears throat> you could run a hybrid variant. That's what I did actually on my current Season character. But I will just briefly go over it, right? In that case... You would point you would um, max out frozen orb as your aoe cold ability this requires level 30 though instead of level 24 and as a second ability you're you you, you will be using a fire skill right you can use the fireball like back in like a lot of destruction days i preferred frozen orb fireball when i wanted to solo progress truth to campaign um my current season character is running Frozen Orb and Hydra, since they changed how Hydra works in Resurrected. Hydra does not have an internal cooldown no more, so this makes it an excellent choice <clears throat> as a uh, second element ability, right? But for the sake of this video, it's a Blizzard Sorcerer's Guide. And yeah, that's what you do. That's the skill tree. That's the gear. You are looking for a spirit sword, a lore helmet, a stealth armor. Um, I would always use stealth over smoke on a sorceress because faster cast rate is like one of the most important stats for the sorceress. Uh, next to plus skills, I'd say. Oh, I got a Tarasha amulet here. Uh, <laughs> this is supposed to be a one skill sorceress amulet. I forgot to change. That's part of the endgame gear, though. A uh, little spoiler here. Uh, a Saigon shield. Nope. No spirit monarch yet. Because, let's be real here, at the season start, like, it's not, it's not that easy to acquire a monarch, right? And for whatever reason, as if the game knows... As soon as you're playing a sorceress, a freaking monarch won't drop. Been there, done that. So yeah, for that reason, I uh, Saigon Shield. Boots, whatever. Don't mind the boots. Um, I could get rid of some of the pieces, right? The important part are these three. Your Spirit Sword, your Lore Helmet, and your Stealth Armor. Um... Usually I would recommend a Rhyme Shield, but since you are the most mobile, you got the, you got the highest mobility in all of all the classes in the whole Diablo, right? So you got Teleport. Cannot be frozen is not that important. It's, n it's more nice to have, right? Like even when we go over to my endgame build with the 15k blizzard setup i don't even run cannot be frozen i think it's just not necessary if you play if you play, if you play hardcore that might be another story right i think on on hardcore i would prefer cannot be frozen at least somewhere but yeah rather take a saigon shield than a rhyme shield that's my opinion um yeah that's the skill that's the, that's the gear we got over the skills 
that's of course the usual right enough strength to wear your gear max vitality some people pre prefer to put some points into energy that's totally up to you um since this is not an energy shield build i don't put any points in here like everything every spare point i have uh, goes into vitality um now very important i'll talk about the mercenary real quick right mercenary plays a big part when you're playing a sorceress um it's your meat shield he takes all the hits Not in town. while you hit the monsters with with your spells uh, with blizzard and, uh, and ice blast in my case you don't need a crazy setup for a mercenary in order to start farming hell mode by the way you don't need fortitude, you don't need Andorias. Eventually you want those items, but you don't need them, all right? I show you, I, I uh, well, um, for time reasons, I won't talk about every possible gear setup for the mercenary. I just show you my setup real quick, all right? He's running smoke for the resistances and the hit recovery, because the mercenary has breakpoints too. Um, in, like in season three, they introduced some new rune words, one of them being Bulwark. And yeah, this rune word is like, it's the perfect helmet for the mercenary man. It has fast hit recovery, life storm per hit, increased maximum life by five, um, and a huge chunk of damage reduction. You can get a better roll, like I do. I think 6% life storm per hit would be the max roll. I don't know exactly, but yeah. I recommend this helm, man. It's served its purpose well. I, it basically keeps my mercenary alive. And I'm wearing an inside. In a non-ethereal cryptic axe. You don't necessarily need to have a ethereal weapon. Uh, but I highly recommend you look for a elite base, right? An elite weapon. Like a cryptic axe, a thresher, a giant thresher, something good. All right, it makes a huge difference. Um, you could get away with an exceptional base. If it's ethereal, though, also possible. But yeah, that's the setup for the mercenary. Later on, you don't even need an inside no more. Because of plus skill scaling, uh, warmth provides you pretty much with enough mana regeneration. Uh, one little tip, maybe useful to some of you guys. Um, of course, sometimes your mercenary will die, like, it's expected, almost, alright, with a setup like this. Um, he will die now and then, especially if you get, if you get hit with amp damage, or if he's swarmed by cows and you don't, a funny term I've uh, been reading, uh, someone in my chat mentioned, uh, like, he got a telesit, his mercenary. Like, you gotta use teleport to babysit him, right? Like, he's in danger, you tell him you just relocate your mercenary. Also, what you can do, you can feed him potions, right? You can feed him potions. Just get a row with, like, rejuves. And as soon as you see your mercenary is dying, you can use, like, the keybind is shift. And then the number, like, in this case, shift three. Thanks, thanks, thanks. And you give him the potions, right? So, yeah, that's two ways of saving him. Like, babysit him with teleport and uh, feed him potions. That's what you gotta do at the beginning. Um, also, when we are already talking about the mercenary, uh, you can. You this is basically another attack skill, right? Your mercenary in combination with teleport, you should look at it as an actual ability within the skill tree. You can uh, telestorm monsters. Like, I will add a little clip where I kill Countess. Like, I farmed Countess all day with a full Blizzard Sorceress, even though she's cold immune. And that was back then in Season 2. Uh, in C Excuse me, in um, Season 1. There were no Thunder Charms yet. So you just telestorm uh, Countess and your mercenary uh, will kill her easily. Places to start farming um, with this build, with a setup like this. Um, 
in hell mode, right? Skipping normal, skipping nightmare, maybe make a little stop in nightmare to farm up the gear. But yeah, the cow level is pretty good. Like Blizzard absolutely obliterates the cow level. Like it's it's really good. It's really good. Even though the sheet says only 3k, but you will see in the footage I provide. Like it's it's really really strong. Um, yeah, the cow level. Other than that, certain terror zones. You gotta watch out for, you know, if there's a majority of cold immune monsters and you don't have a Thunder Charm yet, well, then don't farm these areas. Duh. But other than that, there are certain areas in the game, um, T85 areas, which means every item in the game can drop there, right? Um, the Stony Tomb in uh, Act 2, it's right in front of the door sometimes. Like within the first area, there's an area called Stony Tomb. That's pretty good. Other than that, <clears throat> if you are a cold sorceress, my favorite spot to farm on the ladder reset was always uh, Ancient Tunnels in Lost City. Gotta teleport around. Uh, only downside is sometimes you gotta. It takes a little time to find it. You look. You're basically looking for some ruins. Ruins, and there's a trapdoor on the ground, and you open the trapdoor and you can enter the ancient tunnel. You can find everything in there, like griffins, burns, every item that exists within Diablo 2 can drop in ancient tunnels. Also, um, the monsters are super squishy, there's next to no cold immune, sometimes there's one cold immune zombie, I think. But your mercenary can easily kill him, it's only an Act 2 area, right? And another thing is, these there's, there's like almost only skeletons in ancient tunnels and i think loot table wise they tend to drop more <clears throat> gray and white items so i used to find my ethereal fresher sooner or later in ancient tunnels back then when i played a blizzard sorceress well, that's just a little tip on farming i mean later on when you like we go like the next we, we, in a minute we go over to the endgame version of this build and yeah as soon as you acquire the, the new, one of the new thunder charms it's it's over with it's any it's over with i mean i've seen people do ubers with a blizzard sorceress all right so yep mercenary gear yeah. skill tree stat points <laughs> Now that you know how to farm uh, with the Blizzard Sorceress at the beginning. Um, yeah, we are going to talk about the good stuff now. Like the endgame builds, which you've seen in the intro, which destroyed bosses within a few seconds. Um, I will show you some... Like this is a more in-depth version now, right? I will go over my gear, stats, breakpoints, mercenary breakpoints. Um, I will start with the 15k Blizzard setup. I know a lot of you like magic find i will show you a 500 percent magic find setup while still having a 7k blizzard and like of course right no blizzard sorceress guide is complete without mentioning the thai russia set and i will show you and talk about a little about the set later as well but for now we start with the full dps setup by the way um this is the community vote winner of season one because usually 
I will go over the gate in a second. Because usually people only are using Blizzard in order to farm up gear for the lightning spec, right? Like, let's be real here. If you're, to if you're talking about like the absolute best sorceress build in the game, it's a lightning sorceress. Like, facts. You know what I mean? Like, it's either the Nova Sorg or like a, a lightning or a chain lightning sorceress. But yeah, people voted in my, like people of my community. Shout out to you guys. Appreciate you watching every stream. People are uh, voted and the Blizzard Sorceress won. They wanted to see like what's, what's the most possible damage and I almost achieved it. Almost. Alright, let's talk about the gear. I'm running a Death Fathom. Um, yeah, with a, with a cold RBF. I don't know exactly. I, I don't remember exactly the role. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, it was like a, a, a mediocre one, like a mid-roll death fathom. Um, I paid a chum rune for this. Yeah, I know. Thanks for trade, I guess. I paid a chum rune for this death fathom in season one. Um, I'm wearing a Nightwings. 15% uh, one, and I put a 5-5 cold RBF in here in order to reach a, like 70% flat cold damage increase which is a lot of damage um, a 3 to blizzard almost ropes with a 5-5 RBF unfortunately I was not able to trade for a white one as well so I got a pink one in here it is whatever uh, Maras a 35% faster cast rate spirit monarch more about that later when I talk about a little bit about breakpoints and stuff um, Sandstorm tracks. I actually prefer these boots on almost any sorceress build uh, for the hit recovery. Right, I can I can uh, reach a nice uh, fast hit recovery breakpoint very easily, which helps me when I'm about to teleport. Like players eight bail runs, and I'm the only source in there, sorg in there, so I gotta teleport, and I don't want to get frame locked. So faster hit recovery is pretty important. A BK ring. Just for the plus skill. It's just a plus skill ring. Like life leech, life storm per hit does not, does not matter whatsoever. Um, snow clash. Just for the pure damage output. Um, some might argue I should run like a Arak, an Arak belt. But the thing is, for like damage synergy bonus, um, only hard points matter, right? So this is actually a two skill belt with this spec whereas our arachnid spider mesh thingy belt whatever its name is like spiderweb sash is only a one skill belt um a fcr ring which i need to reach a 105 percent uh plus a breakpoint and mage fist the fire skills obviously does nothing for my build, but the faster cast rate and the mana regeneration does. Um, these are all uh, these are all uh, cold skiller. Some of them with life. These are some plain ones. A torch, an any. Uh, these are all magic finds more charms. Some with res, whatever. All of the stuff is self found. I mean. Not the skiller, of course. I like. I would never. I maybe found the one, but like the small charms, I found them over the course of a season, right? Just collected the seven percenters, and of course a uh, call to arms and a spirit. My mercenary is wearing, and I can highly recommend you guys this setup if you are not able to make a fortitude, right? What I'm going to show you right now is, in my humble opinion, the best mercenary setup in terms of pure damage before you're using fortitude on him. So, treasury in an ethereal base, G face with a 59 as jewel, and a reaper's toll with a socketed with a shale rune. Of course, like if you can get an ethereal one, but yeah, with this setup. He deals a lot, a lot of damage. Reason being, like crushing blow and decrepify. And depending on what weapon type your merc is using, right? 
he has breakpoints like attack speed breakpoints and with this setup you're in the last and fastest uh, is breakpoint which is 75 percent and yeah well the faster he can stab the more the higher the damage output is and the more life he can leech which in return like keeps him alive right um a quick side note about the treasury though there's an old argument where people used to say the treasury for your mercenary should be as bad as possible in order to proc fate quicker or easier um the, re the reality is though he will most likely die before fate can proc in like 99 percent of the cases right so even though like it's just a little tip from my side even though treasury grants like no huge armor bonus or whatever you use an use an elite base anyways use an ethereal nice defense base um you yeah. that's my preferred setup actually um his drop was basically to one-shot counters. And you can achieve it with this setup. Like, for real. You telestomp on her. Like, two, two jabs. You know, he's using the ability jab. Two jabs max. And she was dead. Like, even with stone skin. Players free, players four split farm. Yeah, I, I can highly recommend you this setup, guys. Um, very quick skill tree again because some people might have used the timestamps and only wanted to see the end game setup 20 points blizzard makes all the synergies Dump all the remaining points in code mastery like yeah that's what i do i don't care if it's overkill man uh one point into frozen armor of course one point static one point telekinesis one point teleport one point in warmth real simple one of the first builds I've ever played. Of course, not with those type of items. Uh, but yeah, in general, like, it's just a beginner-friendly build. And it's like, it's good. One of the best and most iconic builds in Diablo, uh, I would argue. So that's the damage setup, right? That's the damage setup. With Battle Orders on, I got like 15k. You can get more damage. You, need, you would need a crafted amulet with at least... Uh, well, two, two, two sorcerer skills, right? Or at least two to cold skills. And at least 10% faster cast rate. Then you can get rid of one of those rings. Wear a second skill ring. Then we are sitting at around 16k. Um, you could get rid of like the tombs. Uh, the tomes, excuse me. And the cube. Uh, put some town scrolls in your belt or whatever. And you wear one, two, three more cold skillers. So you can get in total... Um, if you want to keep all the breakpoints and some nice resistances as well, you can get like four, even four more skills to your blizzard. So we are looking at, like with battle orders on, we are looking at a level 50 blizzard, which is absolutely ridiculous. There's no scenario in the game where you would, meet, where you would need that, that much damage, right? Uh, all right. Breakpoints. Very important. For the blizzard itself... Not really, but for Ice Blast and eventually you want to teleport quick and stuff. 105% um, faster cast rate is like the recommended breakpoint for a sorceress. The next one is 200 something. I don't even know. Basically, the next I think the next breakpoint you can't even reach it. Let's be let's be honest. I don't even remember. Maybe you can tell me in the comments below. But yeah. 105% is the faster cast rate breakpoint for any sorceress unless you're using one of those skills, right? They got different breakpoints. Everything else, every other build wants a 105. Um, faster hit recovery. I'm in the 60% breakpoint and the next would be um, the next breakpoint would be 86%, and the breakpoint after this would be, yeah, something ridiculous. But yeah, I'm in a 60% hit recovery breakpoint. I got the faster cast rate breakpoint. Um, we are at 69 additional code skill damage, and over 200% uh, code pierce. I don't have a code sunder in my inventory right now. 
those that are in quote new newish i mean they in here like since like a season now but yeah try of course to get one of those um even though they changed they changed if not to, uh, if uh, i don't want to say nerfed but they changed how cold mastery works in combination with a thunder charm because it was like it was too strong all right nevertheless it's still super viable like it's still one of the best builds in the game but it's just not you know overpowered all right i will now quickly switch to a magic find setup all right guys if you're interested in that Uh, give me a second. I've been I, I haven't been on this character for a while now. War Traveler, of course. Um maybe Gold Rap instead of uh Spiderweb Sash. Still Mage Fists. Get another magic find ring. This one? No, that's not quite it. Oh, you know what? I forgot a Geats. I need a Geats, of course. Is this the right setup? Nope. Still not the right setup, though. Uh, yeah, I'm like... This is sp spontaneous, man. I'm not gonna lie. But I still wanted to showcase like a magic find setup with 7k Blizzard. Yeah, that's the one, right? So, in order to reach 500% magic find, by still rocking a 7k blizzard, which is plenty of damage. I don't know the scaling exactly, but I'm pretty sure you could do like a player's 5 or player 6 split farm with this still. Okay, even though you run 500 MF. Um, an Oculus with an Istrun. A Shaco with an Istrun as well. Skaldas with an Ist, uh, Chance Guards, 40% would be the perfect roll here. A cast Red Ring here, would preferably a little bit of Magic Find. Uh, Arak to reach the 105% um, faster Cast Red Breakpoint. Plus skill is also neat. Um, another FCR Ring with Magic Find. Still Maras, still Spirit. Uh, a war traveler boots and yeah some small charms and the geats and the geats of course that would be a magic find setup right now we've seen the full damage variant now we've seen the 500 magic find setup just to give you an idea i mean it's almost impossible i can't go over every gear possibility um you can mix and match however you like i mean you can just like on the fly, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, we do a player's 8 split farm now instead of player's 3. Well, let me change the helmet, all right? For a little bit more DPS or whatever. So, yeah, feel free um, to build up your sorceress however you uh, however you may desire. Now, I'm going to show you the full Tarasha set real quick. Almost an honorable mention in a sorceress guide. In my opinion, one of the better class sets. You could try and trade for all the Tyrusha pieces, right? The only expensive things are the armor and the amulet. If you're talking about like a new season. This costs like an Ohm rune or a Vex rune or... Yeah, same for the amulet. Later into the season, the armor costs around an Ist, around an Mal rune, uh, depending on defense roll, though. But yeah, this set is, is ridiculous. Um, it provides you with all the necessary stats you want. Um, you cover all the breakpoints. You, you are covered in all the breakpoints as soon as you wear the full set. Um, the only thing you need, in addition to the set, is like... 
you need a 35% faster cast red spirit and 20% uh, cast red gloves. You could run only three pieces as well. And you get rid of the weaker pieces, which are the helmet and the weapon. And you are going to replace them for just uniques, you know. Like the Shaco is overall better than the Tal Helm itself and so on. But yeah, in my opinion, like you either run the full set or you run the amulet, the armor and the belt. But yeah, just wanted to show this real quick. And you know, back in the way, back in the day when I started playing Diablo, I was struggling, not gonna lie. And they asked like my buddies at school, hey man, like, what are you doing, man? Like it looks so easy when you play the game like and they just said hey man if you have no clue about the game make a blizzard sorceress and equip equip this character full time rusher set and you're good to go so yeah wanted to show that real quick well i guess i guess i'll cover everything oh one more thing how to make bank with the sorcerers, right? You can excellent farm up. You can farm up tokens. One token equals an Istrun, approximately. You can farm up tokens. You can rush people. I used to rush people for um, Hellforge quest. Takes like a few minutes. Rush like three people on the evening. And after a week, you have like a few Istruns, you know, you know what I'm saying? So... There's that. Um, other than that, like you are so, like you got such a high mobility, you can delete the act bosses, you can farm many of the good areas, like the AD T85 areas and stuff. A sorceress with decent gear can finance your whole account. All right. So, yeah, a must have. A must have, I think, in like each season, a sorceress. Yeah, with that being said, uh, thanks for watching. If you found this any useful, uh, give it a like. And I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Later!